What's up, everybody, and welcome back. So uh, the next step of the studio construction is going to be the patch panel section. Um, so the first part, before we start working on the rack itself, is to build our local I.O. panel. Um, this is going to live at the very top of the uh, patch rack. And this is something that, uh, since I've been kind of using the console, because I have uh, 30, 35 channels done at the moment, um, uh, the, the, the need for a patch bay has become very, very apparent. Um, it is super, super annoying working on the board in the kind of temporary way that I've got it going on now. So um, the first thing that I want to do for my temporary solution is actually just get this local, this local panel done. So um, the panel is eighth inch uh, black anodized uh, aluminum that has white laser etched labels. Um, and I've got a variety of connectors that are going to go in here. And this is basically just uh, very quick things that I'm going to need to get to in, in the studio. So um, I'm going to get this panel loaded up, and uh, I'll tell you what my plan is for, uh, for all the connectors. Okay, so the panel is loaded up, and here's what we've got. Um, starting here on the left, so on my wall, if you remember from the uh, wall panel snake video, um, I've got 16 channels of analog I.O. Um, over DB25. There's another four um, just RJs in the wall, so my plan 17 through 24 is to um, use radial catapults um, so that I can run analog lines over the data lines that are in my wall. Um, and so I'm going to accomplish that by, by using um, the catapult uh, RJ45 to quarter inch breakout boxes. So this is going to enter here as uh, RJ45 and then exit as uh, four uh, TRS jack or connectors per each one of these. Um, so that's going to patch directly into the top line of my panel um, in the wall. Uh, behind the console right now, there's four um, there's four data jacks back there. So and I, they're labeled on the wall nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So that's why the the, the um, uh, jacks are labeled that way. It corresponds to my um, patch panel in the basement. Um, so what I'm going to do is this is going to be a patch right here. So nine is going to go to seventeen through twenty, and eleven is going to go through twenty uh, to twenty four. Uh, just because those lines are going to be hard patched uh, for for the most part, but if I need to use it as a data line, I can repatch it, or if I need to access those those snakes for something local, I can get to there too. So that's my plan. As of that, um, I'm also going to put an AVB switch in uh, in in my I/O rack. Um, my interface rack is going to be also below the console, so I figured that I would just leave myself two extra jacks. Uh, for AVB, which is those are aux, and then, you know, uh, 10 and 11 can be just for straight up data if I need, you know, if I need to hook a computer in or, or something like that. Um, so moving down the line as far as signal goes, um, I, I thought that it would just be nice to have four outs and four ins as far as local XLR goes. So, you know, if you want to patch something in the control room, if you want to do a vocal in the control room or you know, you need to have a, a separate recorder or, you know, if somebody is trying to do some video thing or, or anything like that, I just figured having 
a gratuitous amount would be good. I thought that two ins and two outs would be sufficient, so I just doubled that because, you know, uh, then you have it and you don't have to goof around with turnarounds at the patch bay and all that kind of stuff. Um, I've got two TRS. They could be inputs or outputs. Um, and then I thought the other really important thing that I really find lacking in a lot of studios is to have an unbalanced quarter inch in. Um, so that if you're if you're working on a part and it's a guitar player or a bass player and they want to track in the live room or the, excuse me the control room they can plug right in there and not have to goof around with um, you know um, goof around with a, uh, a converter because you know you you can't plug an instrument cable into a patch bay and you have to turn on cable and I just figured it'd be cool to have um, TS on the front TRS on the back just so the ground lines up um, and then the last two are um, just the fourth matrixy on the consoles that so we have an uh seven and eight uh matrix seven and eight that are always going to be hard patched and my logic there is if somebody brings a recorder in um if you're trying to do a demo video or if a guest engineer comes in and they want to have um just a recorder of the day session then i don't have to goof around with it in nuendo i can i can have just a, a dedicated console output that's available on the front uh, for video production so um here's the front and so uh, we're going to start with the back uh, now. We're going to get everything soldered in. So um, what I'm going to do here is my first step is to add what is called a standoff to the back of each one of these connectors. And the way that I like to do this is with this little piece like this. Um, so this is going to screw right onto the back here, just like this. And this is going to be a nice little saddle for my cable path. And at the moment, the way that I'm thinking about the cables pathing is they're going to go across here, and there's going to be two main umbilicals that terminate right here. Um, so the way that the standoffs work is, let me see if I can do this with one hand. This is just a basically a long extruded female female nut. So this is just threaded. This just goes right on there like that. Um, and then you get a cable saddle and just screw that in to the top there. So that's, uh, this is it built and this is it um, as, as separate components. So that's just a nice way of taking the uh, solder or the strain off of the solder on the back of these, uh, these connections and then just putting it on there. So um, I'm just gonna do one every other and we'll just make a nice little umbilical run off of the edge. All right, friends, so the beginning half of that video that you just saw was shot in March. It is now the end of August. Um, as you can tell by my voice, I'm, I'm just getting over the plague here. So this is actually forcing me to take this weekend and uh, next week off. So I figured we would uh, finish up the patch bay here. So uh, this is what we've got loaded in March. So here's all the connectors in here. Here's our cat connectors. XLRs and our quarter inches. Um, and here's the back. There's a couple of standoffs on here, but I think I'm probably going to change these. Um, so basically, this is our, our uh, local I.O. panel. Um, I'm going to start to work on the patch rack, which is this guy right here. This is a 12 space, uh, 12 space dovetailed studio rack from LM Cases. Uh, if you're interested in this, I'll leave you a link below so you can check it out. But uh, um, basically, here's the console where we're at so far. Um, so this orange rack is going to be replaced with our natural rack. So um, I just finished my fifth revision of the patch bay. So that's going to be the next video. So uh, for this one, we're going to just finish up the local uh, I.O. soldering and uh, the video after that we'll get started on our patch bay so let's get this thing terminated
everybody, we are finished up. So here is some detailed looks at the back. Um, we do have tethers going on, uh, on each one of these, which we installed earlier. Um, here's our matrix outputs, uh, seven and eight. Here are all of the quarter inches terminated. Um, so the, uh, the tails on this aren't very long. Um, these are long enough to patch directly to the console, and then these are actually um, only long enough to go to the patch bay that is right above it. So um, these, these don't need to be uh, super long. Um, I, I ended up using an amalgamation of, uh, of all of the uh, TRS jacks that I had laying around in my shop. I never really did a proper bill of materials for this, so uh, we've got a couple of uh, reens going on here. There's a couple of uh, silver <laughs> TRSs and a couple of black ones, but uh, no one's going to see the back of this other than you guys right now, so I figured we'll probably be all right. Um, I am going to make custom um, RJ um, network cables for this, but uh, I assume that uh, you probably don't care about that. Um, so anyway, uh, we'll get this mounted, and then uh, in the next video, we will tackle the patch bay. So uh, thanks for stopping by.